Hello, my name is Nathan Jackson, and this is Nathan's Neighborhood History. Today we'll be featuring the Lafayette Square neighborhood along the eastern side of Lafayette Park. Be sure to comment your favorite house on the tour below as you watch through the video. Also, be sure to subscribe to this house. In 1866, the first Second Empire house in St. Louis was built right at Mississippi Avenue in Kenneth Place. This house was originally owned by a guy named George F. Hume, who was a lawyer. He only lived here for a short period of time, and in 1870, approximately, he sold it to William Tausig. And William Tausig is a fairly significant figure in St. Louis history. He immigrated from Bohemia, and he was a captain during the Civil War. And after the Civil War, he was a, an engineer and he helped James Buchanan Eads design the Eads Bridge and was very, very involved in the construction of Eads Bridge. Tausig lived here until about 1880 or so. In 1885, this house, which originally was the first Second Empire style house to be built in the city of St. Louis, was modified to be a three-story Italian style home. And since that time, it has remained as an Italian style home. Today, this house is the model example for many of the modern infill houses around the Lafayette Square neighborhood. So this row of five houses here on Mississippi Avenue were all built between 1877 and 1878 in the Second Empire style. The four houses on the right were all built together in 1878, but the house on the far left was built in 1877 for Horace Bixby. Horace Bixby was a steamboat captain and in 1857 he was taught how to be a steamboat pilot by none other than Samuel Clemens, better known as Mark Twain. So they both came to an agreement that Mark Twain would be teaching Bixby how to pilot a steamboat, but then the Civil War broke out in 1861 and Due to the Civil War, both parties mutually agreed to void the contract because the Civil War didn't allow for them to go out on the river and pilot the steamboats. They remained good friends after the Civil War, and in 1868, Bixby actually moved up to the corner of Lafayette and Mississippi into the dual mansion owned by him and another guy named Shebel, and he lived in this dual mansion for almost a decade before later building this second empire house here in 1877. It's very, very likely that Mark Twain would have visited this house on numerous occasions when he came through St. Louis. In 1896, the house was heavily damaged by the tornado and the tornado actually ripped off the mansard roof. It wasn't until 1976 that the mansard roof was rebuilt on this house. The rest of these houses were all built later in 1878 and some of these houses feature cast iron frilling along their roof lines although this is likely not original. The house on the far right had the cast iron frilling added in a restoration just this past year. This flounder house is the only one of its kind to be facing Lafayette Park. It was built in 1878 in the Italian style. Typically, flounder houses would have been built for poorer or middle class residents of the city, and they would have been built on very small lots. This particular house is the only one which was built in what was an extremely wealthy neighborhood at the time. The guy who had the house built was Lawrence Lampel, who was a brewer associated with the Wainwright Brewery. He had the house built for his daughter and his son-in-law, and his son-in-law was Zachariah Wainwright Tinker, and 
Zachariah Wainwright Tinker was part of the Wainwright family, and he lived in this house from about 1878 to 1890, at which point he moved into Compton Heights. The Wainwright family opened the St. Louis Brewing Association, which was a conglomerate of the many small breweries in town, and it was started in 1889 in order to compete against the ever-growing Anheuser-Busch and Lemp breweries at the time. So these two houses were built in 1874 by James B. Eads, the same person who designed the Eads Bridge. They were built as investment properties for his daughter Elizabeth Jane Eads Howe. Elizabeth Jane Eads Howe was actually married to the son of St. Louis Mayor John Howe, who was mayor back in the 18. 50s. These two houses are excellent examples of the Second Empire style in the mid-1870s and also are very typical of what upper middle class and wealthy families would have lived in. On the front of the house, you have a limestone fronted facade, which back in the 19th century was used as a sign of status and wealth. So if you look at the Lafayette Square neighborhood back on the 1870s, 75 Compton and Dry map, you'll notice that on the southeast corner of Park Avenue and Mississippi, there's a large Second Empire structure. This was the Lafayette Park Hotel, and it was opened in about 1875, and at the time of the Compton and Dry map, it would have been a brand new hotel. This was one of the wealthiest neighborhoods in St. Louis back in 1875, and this would have been a place for a high society to board and stay when they visited the neighborhood. It remained popular through the 1880s and 1890s, but in 1896, when the tornado came through, it destroyed the Lafayette Park Hotel. Since that time, this area has been redeveloped with a pocket park and two infill homes, which are designed to look like the George Hume House and William Towsig House up the street. This building on the northeast corner of Park and Mississippi was built in 1884 by Jacob Stock, and it is one of the nicest examples of a Second Empire commercial building that still stands in the city of St. Louis. In its early years, this building was used as a medical building and featured several doctor's offices as well as a pharmacy right on the corner. One of the original owners of the pharmacy was G.H.J. Andreas and G.H.J. Andreas had opened this pharmacy by the mid 1880s and he lived upstairs above said pharmacy. Andreas remained in the building even after the 1896 tornado and when the corner of the building was damaged he just moved into a unit off to the side while they repaired the corner of the building. In 1902 this building was home to a conference for Eli Lilly, and it still remained with lots of doctor's offices and a pharmacy for many years after that. A 1926 photo shows that even in that year, it was still being used as a pharmacy and medical building. However, by the 1970s, this building was being used as law offices, and today it's home to a laundromat and multiple different restaurants and other businesses. So Lafayette Square back in the 19th century was one of St. Louis's wealthiest neighborhoods. One of the reasons for that is that in 1863, the Missouri Congress passed an ordinance that banned certain types of businesses and industries from being located within 800 feet of the park. As a result, n there were none of these types of businesses such as a brewery or a soap factory or various other things that would have caused pollution in the neighborhood. And so it was thought to be a very desirable area for wealthy St. Louisans. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to follow me at St. Louis History and Architecture on Facebook and Instagram and book with one of my tours of Lafayette Square or any of the other neighborhoods that I feature. Also, be sure to tune in to part three 
where we feature the northeastern part of the neighborhood, including Harris Row. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. See you next time.